Hello, I'm still Hannah. This is still my vlog. And today I wanted to share with you some things that I did to prepare for my study abroad and some things that you can do to prepare for your study abroad or any big trips that you're taking in general. So let's get to it. Okay, so number one and most important thing, probably these are all pretty important really, passport. Uh, yeah, make sure you have one of these and make sure you don't try to get it like three weeks before you leave because that's not going to happen. Seriously, you need to get on that stuff like months ahead of time. But anyway, make sure you have your passport. Make sure you have any visas that you need, whether you're working or you're studying. I don't need any visas because I'm there for less than six months and I'm a student, but I know a lot of people do. And if you're there for like a full semester, you might need to get one. Make sure you have any identification cards also that you need to have on your person, whether it's a student ID card um, or an official government ID card that comes with your passport. I have both of those actually. Second thing is to make sure that you have packed all of your prescription medications with you and that you have a prescription on you, a note from your doctor if possible, explaining why you need these, maybe what's in them, at the very least that you're allowed to have them on your person and that you need them to live or to regulate your bodily functions in any manner. Um, make sure you carry these in your carry-on because if anybody asks about them, you can just pull out the prescriptions, be like, look, here's the quantities, here's the prescription, I'm allowed to have this, it's acceptable. Just make sure that you have everything you need because you might not be able to get your prescription in another country depending on where you're going or if they have that product or if they even sell it there or if it's legal or if you can get prescriptions for that. It's a whole mess. Take care of it here before you leave then go on your trip already having all of your medications and the prescriptions that say you are allowed to have them with you so you don't get into any kind of trouble with anybody else's government because you really don't want to be an international incident. <laughs> Third thing, banking. There's a lot of stuff that goes into banking when you travel and you need to be very careful that you've planned it all out and that you've done your research in what you're going to do monetarily. The most important thing is making sure that if you're using a credit card or a debit card abroad that you call your bank and let them know the dates that you're going to be in, what country you're going to be in just for that period of time so that they don't shut off your card when you get there because that would be not a pleasant surprise. On that note, make sure you know what kind of payment you're going to be using in the other country. Uh, make sure you have a card that's accepted or can be used. Make sure you research international charges on whatever card you're going to be using. Uh, make sure you have a lot of cash on you, uh, even if it's just for backup or emergency, and maybe it's not always on your person at all times. If you have like a safe or something, uh, in your hotel room or wherever you're staying, that would be good too. It's just always good to have a few different ways to pay for things and to know that your cards will be accepted in your host country. Uh, and also make sure before you leave or as soon as you arrive, either or at the airport, you exchange at least a little bit of currency to already have on you before you exchange the rest or start using cards, just in case you need to tip anybody or take a cab somewhere or really any anything can come up that you need cash for. So it's important to make sure that you have on you. Okay, fourth thing, not eighth thing, fourth thing, <laughs> um, cellular and electronic devices. Make sure that you have a plan for your cell phone, whether you are just straight shutting it off or buying a prepaid phone, getting a SIM card, getting some fancy international plan, just using Wi-Fi 24 seven, whatever you're doing, make sure you have a plan for it and that's taken care of before you leave. Cause you don't wanna get there and run up a bunch of cellular data and roaming charges that you have to pay for when you get back and it's not going to be fun. Don't do it. Make sure you have a plan for how you're going to stay connected with people and make sure you do have a way to stay connected with people. You really don't wanna just drop off the face of the earth. That gets people really worried and you don't want people searching for you in a different country or scaring the lights out of anybody who cares about you. Make sure you have a plan. As far as electronic devices go, research currents, uh, like electrical currents and whether you need an adapter versus a converter. Maybe you need both, one for one thing, one for another. Um, if you can do without certain devices, then I would just leave them behind. Or if you can buy them in the host country, like I'm going to be purchasing a hair straightener when I get to Europe. 
uh, so I don't have to worry about bringing one over that like heats up the electrical circuits or blows up on me or something. I'm just buying one when I get there. If you can do that, do that. If you can leave something behind, leave it behind. You don't really want to have to worry about changing electrical currents or blowing fuses or paying for the damages that that might cause or anything dangerous like that. You also don't want to electrocute yourself. Watch out. All right, so one big thing that I did is months in advance booked my flight, my flight to and my flight from. Make sure you do that, and the earlier you do it, the cheaper the flight is going to be. So I recommend doing that as soon as you have the money to be able to pay for a flight because it's really important. Obviously, without the flight, you can't get there anyway. Don't wait till the last second. Um, and also, if possible, you want a direct flight because you're less likely to lose your luggage or have problems with things going wrong. And oh, now we have a layover. Now there's weather. If your flight gets up in the air, your flight's up in the air and you're probably not stopping until you get to your destination. And when you get there, your luggage hasn't moved from that one plane. So direct if possible. If not, try as few layovers as you can get. Unless you really just want to be adventurous and spend like four hours sitting in an airport terminal and not really seeing anything cool. <laughs> Next thing, because I lost count, so I'm not putting numbers on these anymore. Make sure you have some kind of itinerary or checklist set up for when you get to your destination so that you're not just kind of blindly wandering. I mean, I guess you can do that, but if you only have so long in a host country, I'd hope that you would have something you know, that you would want to see or things you want to experience or things that are planned out. Some things have to be booked like months in advance or at least a week in advance or tickets run out of certain places you might want to see or do. Um, one thing that I booked because I'm going to London is I'm going to take a day trip to Cardiff and visit the Doctor Who experience. Hopefully we'll see a video about that later. But I had to book that like three weeks, four weeks in advance, I don't know, something around that to make sure that I got tickets because it's going to be sold out if I wait till the week of. It might already be sold out now and it's still two and a half weeks away. So there's that. Make sure that you've looked into things and you know what you can pay for at the door, what's free, what you would need to book ahead of time, just so you don't show up and get really disappointed. You don't want to experience that kind of heartbreak on a once in a lifetime trip. Note on top of that, make sure you book a place to stay, a hotel or a hostel or wherever it is. Make sure that you have a safe and clean place to sleep and eat your meals if you're not going to be eating out all the time. So I didn't have to do any bookings for hotels because on the study abroad, they already set up your housing for you, but I am taking a mini trip to Ireland and Scotland and I had to book hostels for that. When you're researching hostels, just, I suggest just looking up reviews on Yelp or Google and different things that people have written about it. I mean, let's face it, if it was moldy or something, people are probably going to be writing about that. If people really liked it, they'll be writing about that too. So just general reviews of places that you might want to stay. And if you are staying in a hostel, um, my cousin who travels a lot, let me know that you also want to maybe pack a padlock. They usually have lockers in places like that for you to keep safe things while you're out because it's kind of like a dorm room style like hotel. Um, but not all of them will rent you locks. Some of them even rent you lockers. Definitely look up how much extra expenses are involved with wherever you're staying, whether you have to pay for a locker or the lockers included in the prize, if you can rent a lock there, if you can rent towels there so you know if you do or don't need to pack those items. Research all of that and make sure you have a safe place to keep your things. And really, if it's super valuable to you, just keep it on you at all times. Just have a backpack or a purse or something. Next thing is make sure you research the country you're going to and that you have climate appropriate clothing. You don't want to go somewhere that is freezing and only have shorts and tank tops, which is pretty much going to be my case. Um, I'm from Florida and so, you know, flip flops, tank tops, shorts, day wear all the time. And summer here is ugh, hotter than, oh my goodness. <laughs> and in London, summer there is actually pretty cool, or cool by my standards at least. You know, 50s to 70s, I've heard, as Fahrenheit, of course. Totally different scales. Make sure you check scales, because America is backwards. So make sure you understand that people are going to be on 24-hour clocks and Celsius and kilometers and all this stuff that you are not used to hearing so make sure you're prepared for that too but 
Anywho, just make sure that you have clothing for it. I had to go out and buy a couple extra pairs of jeans, a good pair of walking shoes, uh, some t-shirts that kind of had like elbow length sleeves. Uh, this is obviously not one of them. Uh, <laughs> but just make sure you have some clothing that you can wear when you get there. And don't overpack your clothing either, but make sure you won't be completely under or overdressed. Very important thing, make sure that you read up on the language and the culture of wherever you're going, especially if it's a foreign language. You might want to learn some very basic or very common phrases so you can survive and get around and understand people. And also people in other countries are generally a lot more patient and understanding with you if you even made an attempt to come up with their language. If you just walk up to somebody and speak to them in English and just expect them to understand you, that's actually very rude and you know they might be nice to you because they might just be a very polite person or they might kind of look at you and be like uh no so try make an effort even if you pronounce it horribly have a dictionary with you make it look obvious that you suck at their language but that you're trying and if it's not a foreign language then like uh me in london it's not going to be a foreign language but there's definitely going to be foreign slang and there's going to be discrepancies between words that we find offensive and even gestures that we find offensive really research those things and understand what's going to piss somebody off if i say it all right so if you're going on a study abroad like i am one important thing is also to make sure that you've written down and researched any school fees that you might have. I have a couple course fees and everything else was paid for well in advance, but I have to make sure that I have the money on me for those course fees, uh, field trips and excursions and whatnot. Make sure you understand what expenses you're going to be paying for extra. Make sure you know if you need to buy any books ahead of time or have any kind of school supplies on you. My coursework is all going to be online, so I'm just bringing a small computer. Um, with me to use for all my online work and I might buy a notebook when I get there but they sell notebooks everywhere but I am bringing a computer and I don't need to worry about books but you might and some courses they might need books they might need you to go and research something ahead of time or read a book ahead of time make sure you know what you're getting into if you're going on a study abroad you know what work is going to be expected of you and you know how to accurately prepare for it it's like any other class guys it really is just make sure that you're ready for that along with you know it'll be fun explore the country but just make sure that you're also ready for the school part of it and you prepare just like you would for any other semester and if you don't prepare for any other semester well i would at least suggest preparing for your study abroad <laughs> Okay, so that's all the travel and prep trips for study abroad or traveling abroad that I could think of at the moment. So that's what I have for you. Uh, if you have any questions, you can comment down below and we'll see if I'm able to answer them or not. I'm not a super experienced traveler yet. This is kind of my first really big traveling experience, but I've had, I have a lot of friends and family members who've traveled that have kind of given me advice that I'm passing on to you. And that's also pretty much what I did to prep for my study abroad. I took advice from other people who've been there before, done that, and you know, I set up my flights, I booked my hotels, I have a checklist of things I want to do, I booked a few like tickets and tours ahead of time, uh, kind of left everything else up in the air, but I made sure I was prepared for my semester school-wise, called my bank, had my prescriptions, my passport, my cards, all that stuff. Make sure you are legal to be in that country. You don't want to get kicked out. And other than that, I guess on a final note, um, last word of advice for traveling. Don't bring drugs to another country. There is literally a whole show on Discovery Channel about the bad things that happen to you when you do that. So... Enjoy your trips, and I'll enjoy mine, and hand out.